today I'm going to talk about self-supervised apparent emotional reaction cognition from BDO. First of all, motivation. There are multiple potential applications, including things like more precise customer feedback, better recommendation systems given that um, the data are video-based, empathic autonomous personal assistant, think Jarvis. Why would we be interested in video only data. First of all, sometimes sound is not available with the video. More frequently, however, noisy environments can be a challenge when relying on audio signal. Think bars or restaurants or simply outside. Even when the sound is available in multiple speaker settings, speaker detection is a problem in its own right. So how humans perceive the apparent emotional reactions most humans actually are relatively good at classifying apart emotional reactions, provided the context. However, typically we think categorical, happy, sad, angry, surprised, etc. If emotional reactions are indeed categorical, how many are there exactly? Additionally, categories would fail to account for things such as more subtle emotional reactions or mixtures of these. For example, surprised and happy surprised and sad. We use continuous metrics for apparent emotional reaction recognition. They're called arousal and valence. Valence responds to positivity or negativity of displayed emotional reaction, whereas arousal for the level of displayed excitation. The picture on the left is borrowed from the paper we cite at the bottom and is making an attempt to link the categorical apparent emotional reactions to the continuous metrics. This is by no means a strict mapping, just a suggestion. And here is an option uh, that makes it a little bit more pictorial. Uh, since the method is sub-supervised, as you might remember from the title, we have pretext and downstream tasks. So the pretext data has nothing to do with apparent emotional reaction recognition databases at all. It's LRS3, which is actually a speech data set. And the downstream data are SIVA and RECOLA, the data sets in one of which people watch adverts and discuss them with friends over virtual call. And RECOLA is a data set where people collaboratively uh, attempt to solve a task uh, both labeled with multiple uh, human annotators. So when we pre-process these data, uh, all of the data sets, first we grayscale it, and then we align and crop the videos based on landmarks, specifically using RetinaNet and FAM uh, for alignment and cropping. Uh, just to be clear, we don't actually save or use landmarks in any way other than to receive the final cropped video. Now the data are pre-processed, why would we use self-supervised learning in this instance? The problem is that the data sets that are labeled for apparent emotional reactions are relatively small. So although there are several data sets that might potentially be suitable for the task, there is not much data. Whereas the self-supervised learning does not require explicit annotations, which means we can use any data set that's not necessarily directly relevant. More than that, we can actually use features learned by otherwise purposed models. The training in this instance works as follows. Um, we pre-trained a model in this case. Uh, we pre-trained it on Lira, which is a um, leap reading model that uses mouth crops. In our case, however, we pre-trained on full faces. The model is based, well, the model pre-training is based uh, on the idea of matching uh, paste features extracted from the waveform audio with the visual features. Then we grab um, the first two blocks, which is 3D convolutional layer and ResNet 18 from that model and initialize our own model called uh, SSVIR, which is sub-supervised video apparent emotional reaction recognition model with these weights. As you can see, we only share these two blocks because later on the model differs quite significantly. Our one contains GRU because we attempt to encapsulate the temporal information in code in the video, which might be important for uh, parent emotional reaction recognition. And then we predict a few things. So first of all, we do predict arousal and balance per frame, although it can be done per video. Uh, and secondly, we also predict one hot encoded discretized versions of arousal and balance. We do it for uh, composite loss that makes the 
model training, a little bit more stable and leads to better results. So after I've initialized the weights and then fine-tuned on the downstream data set, the model is ready and can be used. So the main metrics we're interested in is concordance coefficient. We also use mean squared error and cross entropy of a discretized version and um, normalized cost sensitive cross entropy as well. We also didn't just select it uh, Lira to begin with. In fact, uh, we also tried VideoBL and Dino. We empirically found that uh, Lira pre training um, is the best. Uh, by the way, just to make it honest on all of the models, we replaced the blocks that we later on borrow for the weight initialization in both BL and Dino with uh, 3D convolutional uh, network and ResNet 18. So now the visual results. Um, as I said before, um, we actually uh, predict arousal and valence. And in this case, our model is in red dot and the uh, average prediction by human annotators is in green dot. Um, again, uh, arousal is the level of excitation displayed by the subject and balance is the level of positivity or negativity of displayed emotional reaction. And you can see that on occasion, our labels are a little bit more prompt to get to the point uh, when uh, a person changes the reaction. That's because uh, obviously this is an autonomous model that generalizes decently versus human, annotator human annotators often take a little bit of time to bring the joystick to what uh, apparent emotional reaction the subject is displaying. Um, finally, there are some numeric results. So this is the comparison with other competitors and as you see our uh, model is absolutely best on SIVA and best for arousal on Recola and a little bit worse than one of the other publications on Valence. We also provide justification for why we use a particular pretext uh, model which is Lira. It is like best across the board compared to the other ones we've tried, which is BL and Dino. And we also do a little bit of a study on the composite losses, which ones are better to use for different data sets. And you can see that it's not the same for Steven and Recola. Uh, we actually make a, a conclusion that they are rather data dependent. Uh, however, we come up with a composite loss that seem to perform more or less decently on both, which was shown earlier. Thank you, and let me know if there are any questions.